Hello everyone, this is a special requested video from one of our subscribers. As you may have seen, I have done some videos on calculating the price of a bond and I've done it with using a financial calculator such as the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus, which looks like this. And I have used it, I have shown how to do it with just a formula as well. If you want to see the original bond video on how to do it with the BA2 Plus, I've got that linked up here for you to take a look at. I also have done some videos on what a bond is as well. But I've gotten a special request from a subscriber and asking how to do this calculation using Excel. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. But first, I want to mention that I believe something great is going to happen for you today. And now back to the video. All right, here I have opened Excel, uh, the Excel spreadsheet, and we're going to go through um, what information is here and how to calculate the price of the bond. I do need actual dates uh, because the way it calculates it. So I just picked some dates here. Uh, for the bond. In reality, you might be given dates. Otherwise, I have just picked some dates here. It's a 20 year yield to maturity bond. So I picked the date of May 1st of 2023. And then the maturity date when the bond is due, I just picked May 1st of 2043, which is 20 years from when the bond is bought. Uh, so that's how you're going to calculate that. The par value of the bond, that's the face value of the bond, that's $1,000. The coupon rate, that's the amount that the bond promises to pay on, uh, in this case, it's going to be a semi-annual basis. 5% is paid over the course of a year, so it's going to be split into two payments. As I mentioned, yield to maturity is 20 years, excuse me. Uh, yield to maturity, that's the, the market rate that the investor is expecting to earn, uh, and that is 7.5%. Uh, uh, and these are going to be put in as percentages. And frequency is 2 because it's paid semi-annually. So it's paid twice in the year, six months apart. And you're going to want to put all this information into your Excel spreadsheet in, because when you do the formula, you won't be able to type in the numbers. You're going to have to pull the numbers from the actual cells here. And I'll show you how you do that. It's not that difficult, uh, but I'll show you that. If you're finding this helpful so far, if you would go ahead and smash that like button, it really helps with the algorithm. This here, I put in per $100. Now, the reason I'm doing it is because the, the calculation we're gonna use, we're gonna use the, the function that is for the price function for the bond that Excel has built in. And it is set up for per hundred dollars of the bond. So we're gonna the answer we're gonna get we're gonna have to adjust slightly uh, because the bond is a thousand dollars. So we're gonna have to multiply it by ten. The end result. Uh, we'll just remember to do that at the end. A lot of times you're not told to do that. So just keep that in mind. We will be doing that in a moment but i just wanted to point that out and because it's per 100 dollars, i put the hundred dollars here because we're going to be doing our basis of calculations based on the hundred not upon the thousand if that doesn't make any sense at the moment it will in a moment so we're going to now go to find the function all right now we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate this and i'm going to show you how to find the function we're going to make sure you're under and look for this sum symbol here, the sigma. We're going to use that and go down to more functions. And when you click on that, make sure this here is on financial. There's other things, look up math and trig database. We want it on financial. So select financial and then go down until you find price. And they're alphabetical, so that makes it easy. So we're going to find the price function and I'm going to click on that. Once we have selected that, click OK. It's going to bring up this box here, and it's going to put the calculation in right here where I've selected this box. So we're going to 
put in our settlement. The settlement is the date that the bond is purchased. And that's what I put over here. So I'm just going to, since this cursor is in the settlement box, I'm going to select the 5-1-2023. And you see it goes ahead and selects and puts in the B4. B is the column. Four is the row. It selects it for you. So it makes it easy. Maturity. Our maturity date is the 5-1-2043. So I make sure that my cursor is in the maturity box. And then I select this here and you see it does not put in the date it puts in a reference to the cell and that's what i was referring to er earlier that you can't just type in the numbers here you can't type in the date here you want to reference the cell the rate it's very important to know that this is the coupon rate that's the coupon rate that's promised on the bond so we're going to select that and again i'm selecting the reference cell this is the yield the yield is the yield to maturity that is the rate that the bond is that the investor is seeking from the bond in this case it's 7.5 percent so i select that our redemption now here's where it gets tricky our redemption amount would be the amount of the par value in other words how much does the bond pay upon maturity which you would Normally think, let's select the thousand here, which is here. But remember what I told you that this says returns of the price per $100 face value of the security that pays periodic interest. So it's per $100. So we're gonna do the $100, that's why I put it here. Remember I mentioned earlier that you may not know why, now you see why, we're doing it per 100. This makes it, if the bond's 1,000, 10,000, whatever an amount it is, it's per 100, so we're going to do the calculation based upon this 100. Now, sometimes people will make the mistake going and clicking OK now, but it's going to give you an error message because even though it looks like all the, the fields are filled in, we're not. We have to go to the slider over here and go down, and there's one more field we need to fill in, and that's frequency. So I'm going to put the cursor in that box. The frequency is how often do we get the interest payments. In this case, it's semi-annual, so it's twice a year. So the frequency is two, so I select the two here. Do not worry about the basis. We're going to leave that blank. I go ahead and everything else is built and filled in. I click OK and it gives me 74.31123126. That's the price of the bond per $100. Well, we know that it's actually $1,000. So we can take that result and we can take that and we can multiply it by 10. So I'm going to go equal and I'm going to take this number and I'm going to multiply it by 10 to get our result, which is $743. And let me go ahead and change this to, I'm going to format it as money. We're going to go ahead and select currency and hit OK. And that gives us $743.11 is the price of our bond. And if you recall from the prior video that I did, that I calculated the price of this bond, exact same terms using the financial calculator, we got the exact same price. So that is how you calculate the price of a bond using Excel. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe and share this with others so we can get the word and others can be helped on this. Until next time, keep your grade alive and subscribe. Thank you.